Instructional Designers and in Offices Drinking Coffee is brought to you by Domino, makers of Domino One, the cloud-based authoring tool for e-learning. Learn how your team can work together better at domino.com. Now, here's this week's episode. There's the music. <laughs> Boy, it's Wednesday morning. It's standing game thing this time, Chris. What do you think? I think it's awfully early to be dancing in Vegas. It is very early to be dancing in Vegas. No, we had, we'll do a special promo. Not a sponsor, but we have Dunkin' Donuts for those people up in their hotel rooms <laughs> wondering if we're going to be going live down here. Yes, we are. <laughs> and we have oh. coffee and donuts. What, what, what is it they say? Devlin runs on Dunkin'? Devlin runs on Dunkin'. That is what they say. Yes, what and the latecomers do just keep strolling in. Oh, Excellent. good. Well, you know, you know, better late than never. We're, 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 we're live with the crew online. And today we're talking about trends. Because we're at DevLearn. Is this correct, Chris? Or am I just making this up? Well, it is correct, and you are just making it up. I mean, both things can be true at once, really. That's that's kind of how we <laughs> how things happen here sometimes for us, folks. Yeah, when uh, when we're winging it, we're winging it. I'm going to just adjust this a little bit for myself. Yeah, and I think what I'm going to do is I will I will give your video feed the spotlight so we can see more folks at a time since you do have a, a small crowd of folks that have joined yeah. us. Yeah. Um, so that should be happening. There we go. Ooh, that's a nice background. Look at those. Ooh, that's uh, a good shot. Yes. Look at that. It's Ladies like you guys are perfectly centered underneath that it's circle, and you're all going Come to, I don't know. It, it looks like you're all going to rise up into the ceiling there the, the in the center. It of is. This is, this is the rotunda area. For those of you that aren't at DevLearn, we are just outside the expo and the expo hall, and they actually have now turned the rotunda area into the book store the last time we did a live idiotic from devlearn uh the bookstore was not here and it was very quiet but now uh i guess people get up earlier these days what happened crazy it's an it's, awful lot of folks from the eastern time zone that have gone to DevLearn. yeah maybe that's it it's, up, it's the trends that anyway. they're, that's it, the, it's the trends that they're thinking about right i think that's that's it was, was that a bad segue <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was thinking, um, here's a Never here's mind. a here's a quasi trend, Brent. Maybe we could start with um, and just check in with folks on on how they're feeling about being uh, in, involved with this new trend called face to face conferences again. Ooh, this seems like a new trend the, that's happening. Yes. The new trend of face to face conferences. What do you think, Mark's got an opinion? Uh, I think this is uh, it's something that's going to be here to stay. And we're, and we're back. Uh, well, so I've gone feral after being locked in my room for two and a half years. So um, <laughs> it's a, it's an interesting trend to actually like be able to touch people. It's it's weird. <laughs> people in real life in 3D like this. This is great. Maybe what we should do real fast is just do a quick round the horn. Hold on. Oh, okay. Well, then they're just in time for the round the horn. Here we go. And just introduce yourself real fast. Hi, I'm Trisha from California. Hi, I'm Jack Hutchinson, Ontario. Ethan, also California. Mark Shepard, also from Ontario, Canada. Hey, it's J Rock. Good to see you guys. How's it going? Good to see you. Yeah. Hey, welcome to the Rotunda and Idiotic. Wow, the whole crew. Come on. Yeah. Come gather around. Gather around here. Grab, grab a donut and grab coffee for you latecomers. If you're interested in talking about trends, that's our topic for today. And I know some of you are hot on trends. I, I, I see the trends, people. I see you. I see you here. <laughs> so, so we'll have uh, we'll have plenty of people talking about trends. Oh, that is very cool. Okay, la ladies and gentlemen, we have J Rock with us right here. How's it going, man? Good man. Good to see you in the flesh, yeah, Brad. Good to see this you. This is awesome. Wow, this is crazy. I know. Like, <laughs> this is harder for me. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. is like reaching out. I was, I was you know, I was, I, I've told this story before, but. I was working. I was the only one doing my job. I didn't have any mentors or anything. And like, this is how I started meeting my tribe and getting to know everybody. So, nice. Nice. so yeah, welcome to uh, idiots and in, no, it's instructional designers. <laughs> Good coffee. We're, we're in a, um, we're in a rotunda right now. And the hottest trend of the year is learning styles. Hit me. <laughs> oh, them's fighting words. I'd say. 
<laughs> Hold on, yeah. <laughs> I think we're gonna edit in like some uh, some fuzziness, some technical difficulties. It, it's like he just cursed on live stream or something. <laughs> there you go. Somebody feed that man. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is the man, Mr. J Rock. And uh, so, who else? I, you got to got to get in the shot. You don't be embarrassed. Kara, come here, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, ladies and gentlemen. Karen North, she's here with us today also. And uh, quick, pick a trend. Um, for this year? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with micro learning because I don't think it's going to quit being a trend because people continue to talk about it. It's a, it's a big thing. Yeah. And we've got a few sessions on that so far, pre-workshops. Did you sit in on any or did you um, present one? No, I, I just got here late last uh, night. Ah, uh, OK. Yeah. So is everybody. That's why we bring coffee and donuts to this to make sure people will possibly show up. Yeah. Oh, I, well, we actually, so we had a little bit of a trauma with our booth and everything got left inside the expo. So we have to wait till expo time. So you guys will have to all come in for that. But yeah, so, you know, Karen North, actually, if those that don't know, was the uh, one of our original guests, the original I guest. You, she was guest number one on El Google. Numero Uno. El Numero Uno. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hi, Kara. <laughs> oh, and there's Jack. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. So we've got uh, we've got learning styles as a trend, and we've got uh, micro learning as a trend. Come on. Yeah. Did you do a trend yet? I, I, yeah, I haven't. I haven't done a trend, but one of the things I've noticed, I guess, is a bit of an anti trend is that there's a lot of people who are very satisfied with with what they're doing particularly if it's very dated because they're comfortable with it they don't want to make changes and it's too hard to make changes and so some of the stuff that they're doing is you know circa 2010 and, and they're very happy with it yeah 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 a lot of our clients a lot of our clients are still focused on um powerpoint and google slides that's it that's all they want. You can't get them. I'm like one e-learning course. No PowerPoint, Google slides. That's it. That's all. And I mean, it makes them very happy. They love it. So, I, so for, hi everyone. For me, Brent, I'm going to speak to Brent because he's here in person. Sorry, people. It is so odd. Um, to go along with that, you know, the, the 2010 style, I think AI in terms of voice, but also in writing tools. So the creating the content, the content curation, the tools that are going to go out and do that for you, yeah. I think is going to be supplementing that 20, 2010 learning and giving it a little of a, what people call a dash of spice, yeah. right? They're going to spice it up. That is going to be really interesting, right? I mean, I just heard recently, well, I, I remembered hearing about it before, but the apps where you can just give it an idea and it'll write a whole essay for you or, a, you know, or whatever you need. Wow. Yeah. So what are your thoughts on how that impacts our jobs? I think we're still going to be here. I really, because it needs to be cleaned up. There's no perfect. But when you look at the writing and, and the way that uh, the product that I've used is called Jasper, it used to be called um, Jeeves, Ask Jeeves or something like that. Or not Jeeves. No, no, wait, you know what? I'm going to make this look that's... a little more comfortable on Sorry. camera so I'm not stretching Sorry, my arm everyone. across the screen. Thank yeah. you. Um, hi, Brent. This I'm just hot. Yeah, this is I good. needed someone to share. <laughs> um... <laughs> so, so, Chris, what, what are your thoughts on that AI stuff? Ah, uh, I am thoroughly, thoroughly and enthusiastically embracing our new AI overlords. Awesome. Just out of fear alone. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Chris. Just out of fear alone. <laughs> but you know what? I think that we're going to continue to be valuable if we know the tools. If we know what they are, we know how to use it, and we use it effectively in our projects with our clients, I think that we will rise above those who are not ready to embrace that yet. I would go, I would go one step farther than that. Um, when we think about the days when some uh, e-learning content development packages were coming out and they said, oh, this is great, everybody can create content. Yeah. Well, sure, that's great, but the unintended consequence is that quality is lacking. And while the tools are there, um, our role is still going to exist because we're the ones who grasp the theory, we grasp the practice, we understand the impact of making specific decisions 
in the design and the development process. So, uh, so you're right. Our roles are not going to go away because we're the ones who bring all those chops to the job. Well, and the, the way those things work is they react to what you feed them. So if we want to, if we want an e-learning AI, what is out there for it to feast on? And what are the things that are, that it's going to pick up on and say, oh, this is what e-learning is, right? Yeah. So, so as instructional designers, we're going to have to shift focus, not just to teaching a human brain, but how do we tell a neural network, this is what works, this is noise, this is the signal, this you can ignore. It would, so I would argue, let me play devil's advocate, wouldn't the AI actually know that better than us by being able to analyze all the stuff that's out there? Dare I say that even? Well, it depends. Like you're just, I mean, so you're training it, right? Like it's, you're, it's seen a bunch of stuff. It's making something and then you're like, that's good. No bad doggy. That's good. Okay. Cause like I'm, there was a, a video I saw a while back, they were talking about uh, biases and algorithms and like yeah. they were trying to teach it to recognize the difference between a dog and a wolf. And it was getting it pretty closely, all the pictures they were getting. And then they went back and looked at the code. What is it determining it by? Because it was making big mistakes every once in a while. And the main thing it was looking at was how much snow was in the background. Because yeah. all the wolf pictures had snow and all the dog ones didn't. And so it's like, we need to know what is it it's picking up on and how is it making the decisions? So. I just have to do a quick pause here because we've got a lot of folks gathering around. It was, a, it was a great trend, and I know a lot of people are shy or grapping around. <laughs> but, um, but, and we got, and I also wanted to be able to tell everybody too there's coffee and donuts up here. I know it looks like you guys already have your Starbucks, but it, feel free to dig into the donuts. I got two dozen, and it looks like we're only halfway through the first dozen. So, yeah, dig in and, and then pass the word around too. So, so the next trend is uh, eating donuts and coffee. Come on in, say hi. Hey, let's do a quick. I'll add you guys to the round, uh, the round the horn that we did earlier. Tell them, just tell me your name and who you're with. And... Uh, I'm Matt Jertson with Better Everyday Studios. Okay. Yeah. Kathy Treadway, I work for American Supply Association. Okay. Awesome. I, I watched your. I've been on idiotic. Maybe I've seen your name uh, in the chat or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Awesome. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so, wait, this is crazy seeing all these people here and, and the face to face. Uh, now I have to try to put the names to the faces. <laughs> right? Oh, stop. Do not, do not test me. I will fail every time. Give people, let people put it a little higher so it's easier for people to uh, cheat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really want it up here? Oh, well. No. No. Okay. We're on camera. Let's keep this family oriented. Okay. I'll throw another trend that is really gaining traction on some of the contracts I'm working on is that of accessibility. Oh. Um, there has been a very ableist view of being able to produce learning materials rapidly. And then uh, those who require accommodations of some kind tend to be an afterthought if they're considered at all. Uh, and now you have to consider accessibility right from the start, right from your needs analysis, right from the uh, right from the assessment of all the learners it needs. And that has to be a primary factor in the design. And that is everything from, you know, uh, from mental considerations to physical considerations, uh, people who need assistive devices, it's all got to be factored in. And, uh, and I don't think there's enough consideration being given to that right now. I don't think it's really being taught too. So, so for our new folks, let me sum up where we've been. Uh, so um, we have learning styles as a trend, although that was a joke. Thank you, J-Rock. <laughs> and um, so accessibility, and then we had AI, and we've had micro learning so far. What do you think is a good trend that we're going after these? Well, I would actually connect a couple of those uh, with what you just mentioned with accessibility and AI and that it's in, in AI is enabling so much more accessibility to be a lot easier through automated translation services and transcription services. It's all that easier. You can imagine a world as the amount of data that's out there for it to chew on gets larger. It's easier for the system to say to uh, suggest changes to make it easier for different people. You know, if we look at the rest of the world, uh, if you look at chess as an example, you know, it was a long time ago that a computer beat a human. And now any computer can beat the best or lots of computers can beat the best humans. But the best chess players are still a human and a computer on a team. And so I think that's where we're going to see the future is how do we work together to enable a better future?
Awesome. I love that. Well, I, I've been working for the American Supply Association. I work with, we work with our member companies, distributors, plumbing, heating, cooling, piping. In that industry, a lot of branches, they don't even have training programs. So they are seeing the importance of skilling, upskilling, reskilling their people right now. So it's not what's the new trend in learning. It's, hey, learning is something that's valuable and I need to incorporate that in my organization. And, and that's something our company supports. So for us, it's, it's helping them build training programs, the ones that are in need of doing that. So that they can get to the point of doing micro learning and, and you know, we're, we're in, the, in the workflow and things like that. So that's, it's a little bit of a different twist, but seeing the importance of training for their people. Yeah. You no, know, and that's a great trend. And it's interesting because that's one that I skipped in my summary. Mark even brought it up as one of the first trends was just basics, uh, PowerPoints. Yeah. And just, uh, you know, everybody just using it. I think, I think we get spoiled by um, being connected to things like idiotic and dev learn and understanding that there's a whole nother world out there and there's technology and it's come a long way, but there are a lot of businesses and a lot of companies out there that are just now opening up their eyes, scratching their heads going, huh, maybe we should train our people and maybe there's a better way to do it than just a classroom and a book. I, I would love to ask you, what change are you seeing in those companies that's causing them to make that shift? Like, what is it? Well, is it a change in the people coming to them or? It's a challenge hiring, number one. You know, I, I'm sorry, plumbing, heating, cooling, pipe, not glamorous. You know, do people want to go to the trade industries? You know, no, let's go to high tech and, you know, corporate America. And, and this is not that. It's a lot of blue collar workers in, in that. So attracting new talent is part of it. So talent management in general. But then, like I said, you know, upskilling, reskilling the people that they have. And again, you know, what, how does a person feel valuable in an organization? You pay attention to me. You invest in me. You know, you help me grow as, a, as an associate, as an individual. So I think that's what is happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I mean, that's fantastic. And then that, I hadn't even thought of that. That's a great uh, point that drivers of what makes these trends happen. We need to get Mike Rowe in here. The, the oh, guy. yeah, yeah. He's all about encouraging people to reminding people that the trades exist and stuff. But I think we've gotten to a world where there's just this big mismatch between how people get in the trades and how people want to get into a career. You know, it used to be you'd go spend however many years as an apprentice and it was just relatively slow and it would take a long time, but it worked out. And now the world's just moving so fast that nobody, nobody has time for that. <laughs> you know, no, no, nobody's, nobody's going to slow down and they, they want it. They want to get something done they want to get started. So yeah. So, I mean, I wonder if that would be an upcoming future trend for um, is people start slowing down and do we go back to that and think, do we, do we start slowing things down a little bit and, and not try to speed up the learning and the career process and the, the go, go, go. I, I, I would say that I think I, I saw something on LinkedIn the other day, somebody was talking about how there's going to be, you know, the future is all user generated content, fast content, quick and dirty content. And I, I kind of, I said, I, I agree and I disagree, but I, I think there's always going to be a place for kind of stepping back and like really fleshing out what is, what does it take to do this? You know, what, what's a, a big picture plan? There's always, you know, even if universities uh, lose appeal, there's always going to be a space for universities and there'll always be a pendulum swing. And as much as, you know, there, there, as much room as there is for the basics, and there's so much uh, green pasture for anything is better than what's there, just a little bit. Eventually, that will all still get to the point where, okay, so now what's the next level? What are the what are the bigger programs that we can do? The longer programs that we can do. Like you're really returning when I threw. They that were, out but there. then I, then they stopped. Then they stopped. Oh. <laughs> That's all right. Chris, how are we doing out there? Anything great in the chat coming at us? Well, it's a pretty quiet day in the chat. I think people are just jealous of uh, <laughs> of those who are live. No, yeah, just, yeah. Everybody uh, wishes they were here. Sorry, yeah. sorry, everybody in the chat. How many people are in their rooms just watching and getting ready for the day? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody came up and did that. Oh, Lydia's just chair dancing. All right, good. Well, yeah, it, it was very awkward to not be in a chair dancing, I must say, but I don't want to distract us from our conversation. So I'm going to rally all this group of people in here. Somebody go, oh, hello. You, come on over. Come on. Come on over. Come on over. 
we're talking trends, like trends, right? And so we need more trends, like or you can duplicate trends or whatever. So first, introduce yourself. Oh, sure. My name is Don Becker. I'm a lead learning development specialist at American National. American National. All right. So trends. You got a good one? Uh, trends. What's that, what's um, one, something that you see or something that you're doing? Something that we're doing is is a big thing, and it's actually a lot to do with kind of what we were doing here yesterday was really getting really fully embracing the idea of XAPI ah. and, and, and building on that and growing it and being purposeful with how we're with how we're designing it. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, XAPI is a big one for sure for those of you uh, out there. The uh, Experience API, formerly known as Tin Can. And, and all that fun stuff. So yeah, awesome. So how far along are you in the process? I know it's sometimes it can be a bit of a transition to start moving from SCORM and LMS over to an LRS and XAPI. And sometimes it's not completely moving from one to the other. It's having both. Where, where do you guys at? So we actually started this process back at DevLearn 2019. Okay. And it was a, a lot of trying to get a lot of buy-in from our senior leaders who were just like, oh, all we need, oh, the only data we need to collect is butts in the seats. That's it. Nothing else matters. Yeah. And so really beginning the, the the push and then finally, you know, getting the okay, then COVID hits. Yeah. And then we have to, you know, change everything we're doing, how we're doing our, our, our learning. And it's been a big, it's been a long, slow process. And so, you know, three years later, we're, just about at the point in time, our, our LMS had to build an LRS because they none, oh, okay. none, none of the ones that were available could fit with our system. Okay. And so, you know, we're right there on the cusp of ready to be able to, to put it into our production site. I'd say probably by January. That's the, that's nice. the plan. Nice. All right. Yeah. The, the whole pandemic thing kind of slowed everybody's projects down, didn't it? <laughs> it made a big difference. Every, yeah. every focus had to change. yeah, it's interesting. I just have to mention that for an insurance company, because I, I like to think of XAPI as kind of cutting edge still. Yeah. And, you know, because not everybody's doing it. Everyone's still trying to go that way. And typically the finance insurance industries are kind of slow for that kind of stuff. It's interesting to see you guys you know, jumping ahead and, and getting that ball rolling is, was there any reason? Did somebody push it from higher up or how did you, how did you get it happening? So I, it, I came from academia. That's where I came from. And so then when I joined in February of 2019 and, and they told me, Oh, this is the data we collect. I'm like, no, no, we need, you know, we need more quantitative qualitative data, you know? And, and so I was really pushing for a lot of that, but our team is, we have a team of five to cover 4,000 employees. Wow. And th th that's a lot to try to manage. I can't interview. 500 leaders and, you know, a thousand people, you know, to get really good level three data. And so how do we automate that? How do we make it where we can kind of begin to see trends and stuff like that? Yeah. And when I came here to DevLearn in 2019, XAPI was, was it. Yeah. I'm like, this is the solution. That's it. Yeah. And just so happened, one of my vice presidents was also with us okay. at, the, at the training, ran into me when I was talking to one of the booths and told him what we we're doing. He's like, oh, that's a really great idea. Let's bring this up to Yes. Yeah, that's that's it. That's yeah. how you do it. You gotta sell it sell up. Serendipitous. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. All right, come on, you guys, get over here. Let's let's get the next round of folks in here. Go ahead and introduce yourself, even though everybody knows who you are, but just wow. tell us anyways. I doubt that. My name is Joe Suarez. I'm a learning experience designer from Columbus, Ohio. All right, yeah, Columbus, Ohio representing. How many from Columbus, Ohio? Just you and Kara? Um, well, the funny thing is I, I put it out on LinkedIn that I was coming to DevLearn and I, I guess I mentioned I'm from Columbus yeah. and someone was like, hey, I work literally down the street from where you used to work, um, same town. So I need to meet that person nice. um, and probably some other folks as well. Yeah, 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 for sure. So, all right, trends. We're talking trends. What, what do you got for us? Trends. Aside from J-Rock's glasses, I think that's going to be the next hottest trend in L&D for sure. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, has, has anyone mentioned hybrid uh, learn? Um, no, a hybrid, uh, you know, in-person and, and online facilitation, yeah. definitely uh, doing it effectively, I think is, is definitely yeah. something you're going to hear a lot about here at DevLearn. Yeah, for sure. Were you here for uh, pre-conference workshops or anything like that? Or did you just roll in too, like everybody else? Yep. <laughs> yep. Awesome. Do you present? Do you have a session today? I don't present uh, this year, no. No? All right. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> It's not that big a thing. All right, so let's do a quick recap. How many of the trends do you remember us mentioning so far? Oh, I didn't know I had to be paying attention <laughs> the whole time. Quiz. We uh, assess our viewers. Ben just mentioned XAPI. Um, I totally blanked on what J-Rock presented once he had those glasses on. Um, 
man. I'd rather right, help you out. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. So just, yeah. So for our summary for the moment, um, pretty much everything is a trend. No. So we've got um, AI. We've talked about micro learning. We've done uh, now hybrid. We've done uh, same old, same old. It was Mark. Some people are still in the PowerPoint area and just continuing to do what they've always done. That can be a trend. Doesn't have to be cutting edge tech. I'll buy into that. And um, what, else? Chris? What am I missing? Do you remember one? Accessibility. Did you mention that Accessibility, one? Accessibility. That's right. Yes, that was an excellent one. Um, I don't think that one will ever go away. I think a lot of the technology that's out there is helping us get better at that, so we don't have to think about it so much, yep. right? But vendors like Microsoft have really gone all in with accessibility, yeah. And it's really cool to see that that transcade down into the tools like Microsoft Office and all those other things. So you can do like live um, uh, captions in PowerPoint, things yeah. like that. Yeah, that kind of stuff is really, really crazy. So what Google Pre Presenter does that too, live online. You can just, while you're talking, it'll just, like if we just, if we streamed this to, yeah, one of those services, it would automatically just put the transcript down right at the bottom of the screen while we're talking, which is, to me just, just, crazy the whole closed caption thing so yeah obviously very interesting any trends coming up in the chat there well we got a plus one on xapi from jim who i think jim said earlier in the chat that he's actually in vegas somewhere he mentioned the vegas weather so oh yeah i think yeah hey jim he's our he's our one person viewing from his room still <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe not i don't know yeah so oh it looks like we've busted into box two of the donuts this is good Right on. This is definitely good. All right. So um, who can we uh, grab somebody else that hasn't been over here yet and to come over and say hi? Don't be shy. Come on. All right. Yeah, come on. Jonathan, hi. how are hi. you, man? Oh, good, John, thank you. Good to see you. Introduce yourself for everybody. Uh, I'm John Hill from the UK. Um, currently work for a company called Entain, a uh, gaming and gambling company, Yeah. Uh, which is kind of in my wheelhouse for okay. learning design Yeah. because it's quite a fun peppy, sporty kind yeah, of yeah, environment. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So I've been doing that for four months now, and this is this is my, my first DevLearn. No, okay. No wonder I can't fit your face into the whole <laughs> DevLearn thing, right? But love the accent, all as always. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, give us a trend. Oh, yeah. Well, I think broadly, uh, data and return on investment. Okay. And I think because we spent the past two years kind of, COVID's been a kind of, a use case for online remote learning by necessity. Right. And a lot of people who are a bit resistant to it, perhaps, and other methods of delivery, more, you know, favor more traditional methods, have kind of had their eyes open to the fact that you can achieve some of the same outcomes, not all of them, of course, yeah. delivering remotely. Um, but I think we've had a bit of a gold rush of people now kind of moving into the industry as well, which is great. But I worry that with that explosion in kind of contributors, content, where the kind of quality control is. And at some point when we're kind of back to normal, it feels, yeah. I mean, I'm in Las Vegas, I'm 6,000 miles away from home, we're back to normal. At some point, the bean counters are gonna say, right, you're, right, you guys, you suddenly got all these new instructional designers, all these new e-learning developers. Yeah. How, how is this paying for itself? Um, you know, how are you demonstrating? You and, and so I, I, a few of the sessions we're gonna yeah. attend this week are, you know, very focused on that, on, okay. on, on that question. Because as, as a learning manager, that's a question I'm going to have to answer to my superiors as well. Right. Um, so I'm very kind of mindful of that. Yeah. Um, but I don't want to be that guy to kind of say, you know, like the, the old gatekeeper saying, yeah, you know, e-learning can't be like that. Yeah, or, yeah. you know, I, 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 want to, I want to make sure that particularly my team yeah. and people I work with can still be creative, push boundaries. But just be mindful that, you know, how much time you're spending on this? Is it achieving the outcome? Because at some point the bean counters are going to count those beans. Um, and yeah. and and that's the, the toothpaste isn't going to go back in the tube. E-learning's here to stay. Sure. But let's make sure it stays by by using it effectively. Yeah, let's be valid and let's make sure that we spend the the company's money wisely yeah. and show value. Yeah. yeah. And if you'd have said that to John Hill three years ago, he'd have called me a liar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see, I see now you've now you've got it. All right. Well, you know what? Let's do uh, real quick I, as. Uh, well, let's see, we still have some extra time, but as people are bugging away, I wanted to get like a group photo before people started taking off. So we need to get, let's get everybody into a shot and do a group group photo real quick. In case, 
All right, just everybody, everybody get in. Everybody get in. And then and then somebody will have to get a screenshot uh, live. Let's see, make sure we get. No, we can do a picture. Oh, we want you in the picture. So somebody will just grab a screenshot. So, yeah, and uh, yeah, there you go. Let's get real meta here. <laughs> All right, everybody say cheese on three. Chris, Chris two, or Lydia, did you get that? Three, two, one, cheese. Nice. We got it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't hear that, somebody said, everybody say learning styles. <laughs> That's always a good one to bring up a smile. Oh, on some yeah. Of our so, yeah. I had to grab that shot before everybody started walking away because there was a lot more people here uh, than that. Oh, is that what it, the real coffee? Well, I got another box of coffee here. So, hey, Jonathan, thank you so much. And so good to see you. Yeah, stop by our booth later. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, for sure. Come on back. Let's close this thing out with uh, some final thoughts from some folks. And uh, I'll, I'll grab other people and see. Oh, Kristen. Kristen. You do. Absolutely. Everybody's been wanting a to chat with you it's been so long good to see you too okay so here we are let's be professional about this no let's not. that's not what idiotic is about <laughs> why start now i know right why be professional now yeah uh, so introduce yourself for me. okay my name is Kristen hayden safty i am a learning manager at capital one now that might be news that is news. Yeah. congratulations thank you Congrats. i started there a year and a half ago yes one of those pandemic things. All right. Yep. So, um, the so well, wow, that just threw me. I'm very excited for you, first of all. Uh, but trends, we're talking trends. We've gone through quite a handful. Have you been listening? Should we test you? Just tell us your favorite trend besides getting a new job. Oh, my favorite trend is doing less and explaining clearly why you don't need to do things. So my, my trend is like essentialism, just do what needs to be done and don't over-engineer. Can we call that a trend? I, if we're not doing it yet very well <laughs> and we start doing it, I think that's a trend. There you go, all right, I'll buy that, I'll buy that. Wow, okay, uh, what do we call that? We, don't we have to brand that? Isn't that what you do when you have a trend? You have to brand things and give it a, a special creative name? Ah, okay. Yeah, you're doing less. Let's just call it doing less. All right, doing less, giving more. Yes. Oh, fun stuff. Like, oh, that's a good one. Say that again. Selective engagement. All right. There you go. There you go. The yes. Now we're ready to talk trends. All right. All right. All right. So uh, MVP yeah. learning. Was it? Say that again. MVP learning, minimal, MVP minimal, learning. Yes. minimal viable product. Learning. Oh, yeah. See, Chris has had his coffee too. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Oh yeah, his camera's not there, but he's there. He's he's <laughs> hiding, hiding behind. I know. We're all sad that it's just me, especially because I had to get the coffee all by myself. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Chris, get this man a raise. <laughs> <laughs> there are two boxes of donuts. Here. There are two boxes of donuts here. So, and I get to keep the rest. No, work. we'll bring them to the booth, and we'll feed people there coming by the booth. And they'll be fine. They should be. But, they should be perfectly stale by the time the expo opens. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, they're Duncan. They last a long time. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. preservative. And so it is. <laughs> it is. They will. They will last, and they will feel good. Well, um, it, yes. they have sense importance to you. Oh yeah, you guys have special donuts in Canada, don't you? Arts importance in the states. You can get them in upstate New York. You can get them in parts of Pennsylvania. Get them in uh, Michigan, usually around Detroit, other places like that. But um, down here, no, no. Yeah. So Chris, you're gonna have to ship Tim Hortons next year. Um, <laughs> yes. Apparently, the Dunkin' Donuts is offending the Canadians. Uh, no, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding just kidding all right well before i think they all come from the same i think they all come from the same donut tube anyway <laughs> <laughs> yeah they all come from the same chinese donut manufacturer they just rebrand them is that it 
<laughs> white white label donuts. <laughs> it's a white label donut. <laughs> All right, things are definitely getting out of hand here, and it looks like people are heading off. So I All don't right. think it would be it would be too bad if we decided to end this a little bit early today, Chris. So groovy. Well, uh, let, gang, let's dance on out of here. It was awesome to see everybody's faces. I wish I could be there with you in person today. Um, have a have an awesome time at DevLearn, gang. And uh, thanks for everybody who joined us virtually and is listening in. Gang, here's the music. Let's dance on out of here. Let's dance on out of here and let's let everybody know that uh, we're sponsored by Domino and we have a booth. Booth 227 if you're at the Dev Learn. And there's the music. And also next week, I have to tell people this, next week's guest, everybody, you must go to uh, crowdcast.io slash domino. Just go to, the, go to our crowdcast page. You'll see all the upcoming guests. Next week's guest is going to be fantastic. Definitely check it out. Um, and uh, yeah, and be sure to click the save your spot on all the events that we already have up there. We've got a great, great group of upcoming folks. Adios. We're dancing out of here. Dance on out, gang. Catch you all later. I can't hear the music anymore. There it is. I'll, I'll turn it up. Here we go. It's the theme song. <laughs> we love it. Yeah.